Are you called to the mantle of a prophet? What does it take to carry out this mantle? Stay tuned because my guest is going to share with us how to be pure in the prophetic. Now is the time to go forward and become all that God has intended for you to become. Today is your day to change your life and live in victory and wholeness. This is Your Path to Destiny with Dr. Candace Smithman. Welcome to Your Path to Destiny. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smithman, and today we're going to be talking about the mantle of a prophet, the call of a prophet, how important it is to have purity in the prophetic. And so this is a very important show because it really helps us understand God's desire for His prophets to have purity. And so I'm excited today because my guest, Pastor Joshua Giles. He is the lead pastor and founder of Kingdom Embassy Worship Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he is joining us today because he has written a book called The Rise of the Micaiah Prophet, How to Keep Purity in the Call of Being a Prophet. So Pastor Giles, it's so good to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Candice. It's a delight to be here with you. Well, I'm excited about your book. I had the chance to read it and it really, really touched my heart, mostly because you're talking about something that is uh, often seen as unnecessary by some people, but right. is really the core and the basis of who we are as prophetic leaders. And that is purity. Absolutely. The importance of purity. So tell me, why did you write this book? Well, you actually just touched on it. You know, maybe two years ago, um, the Lord spoke to me and told me I needed to write on this subject. I had been traveling, doing prophetic ministry from state to state. I've been to over 30 nations and uh, it was exciting to go, but I found out that there were many people operating in the prophetic that did not know or understand the aspect of purity. They didn't know prophetic protocols. They didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And so as I started writing this uh, two years ago, uh, I started and then stopped. And then the beginning of 2020, I picked it back up and just started writing this out. And I discovered such prophetic insight on Micaiah and all about his life and then began to use that as a springboard into deeper prophetic revelation on purity. Wow. I mean, it's amazing because, you know, there really does need to be purity in the prophetic. I mean, I don't even understand how somebody could call them a prophet yes. without going through the processes, which you discuss in your book of being pure. Yes. I mean, it's not an easy thing. I mean, the tests for the call of being a prophet are not something that people sign up for or should not sign up for with a laissez-faire attitude. It's a very, very important thing. We know from Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, that the word says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which means that when we are prophesying or in an environment of the prophetic, the spirit of Jesus is present. Yes, yes, that's so true. And I think many have lost track of that. And God is centering the prophetic back to where it needs to be, uh, where we testify of who Christ is. And if we're not pointing people to him, we're not doing our job. Mm -hmm. And so pure prophetic flow is to is to point people and direct them back to the father. Now, we know uh, in the book of Amos, it says uh, specifically that the Lord does, does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos chapter three, verse seven. And so we know that if, if the spirit of the Lord is going to be speaking to us, we can't have anything that is attached to us that is not in common with the Lord. That's if right. it is in common with the enemy, it will skew the pure prophetic word, the pure truth and unadulterated word that is coming from the Lord. That's so true. And those are some of the things I write about, even in this book, um, touching on the stages of purification and even uh, the stages of sanctification for a prophet. We have to make sure that we're not contaminated uh, by any outside source. And it's very easy to become contaminated in the prophetic where we've got money, you know, that mm -hmm. could be a draw. You know, you've got people who want you to do things. They have certain demands for you. And when it comes to being a pure prophet, you have to make sure that there are no outside influences that uh, really control you or control your prophetic utterance, because that's where we get into the danger zone. 
that means we have to have a handle on our flesh. Yes. So absolutely. tell us a little bit about what are some of these processes that God takes us through to purify us? Well, when we look at Micaiah's life, I'll, I'll start there yes, because do. Uh, Micaiah is this obscure biblical figure. We don't hear much about him. A lot of people, even in the body of Christ, haven't really heard too much about him, but he was a uh, protege of Elijah the prophet. And he was one of the three that were trained by him that the Bible highlights. And of course, uh, many of you know the story, maybe in 1 Kings chapter 22, uh, where Micaiah is called on to give a word to the king. Mm -hmm. And the word that he has, it's not a word that he wants to hear. And so Micaiah gives it anyway, but he's put in prison because of it. And so when we deal with stages of, of purity, uh, we have to come to the conclusion of, am I God's prophet or the people's prophet? And so I believe that that's the first step is being completely yeah. surrendered to God, knowing that you are his prophet. And it doesn't matter whether people like you or accept you or uh, even like what you have to say. Uh, your choice is between those two. And when you choose God, mm -hmm. he'll back you up every time. You know, that's really, really powerful because if you still have within your flesh a need to please men, oh, yes. then you are setting yourself up for a very, Absolutely. very difficult pathway as a prophet because you're going to be fighting a lot with, wow, I got this word. Like, should I give this oh, word? Right, you know, right. how's, how will this be preve prevented? I, I really want people to like me. You know, I like yes. my title, these yes. kinds of things. And I know you've traveled the world and so you've seen a lot of things that are not holy and not righteous, which is what caused you to write this book. Absolutely. And so, so seeing men and women want to be pleased more yes. by the word spoken. I think you have a story in there about that too. Can you elaborate on that? Um, well, there's, there's a couple of stories yeah. that are there. I can remember uh, going to a church and I was sitting in the very back and uh, the pastor called me up out of the blue and said, I want you to come up to the front. And they just shoved a mic in my hand. And I uh, didn't have time to really process it or think too much about it. And before I knew it, I just started, you know, speaking what I heard the Lord say. And uh, he spoke to me two different names of people. And he gave me specific detail about what was going on in their lives. Uh, when I said it to the people, nobody moved, nobody said anything, nobody came forward. And I was kind of in one of those embarrassing moments where you're thinking this word, I must have missed it. And uh, I, I remember after the service, they came up to me and they said, uh, two, two of the people, they said, you, you called out the names of my two family members. Uh, they said, but we were just too afraid to come up. And I started to go back to the pastors and tell them, hey, this word was accurate. And the Holy Spirit stopped me right there. And he said, this is a part of your training. He said, I'm teaching you about rejection. I'm teaching you how to deal with embarrassment. I'm teaching you as a prophet how to stand on my word and know when I'm speaking and not go after the fame, the attention, the approval, or even the validation of the crowd. And so I left that service with the majority of the people thinking the word just was off, uh, although the testimony came in secret after. My goodness, that is a test. Yes. That is a training process. You know, but the Lord will teach us when to keep our mouths quiet. Yes. <laughs> so you pass the test in that you didn't go back to get the approval of yes. the pastor. Yes. You know, and it is a tough situation when we're placed with that. But it also shows us too how close our relationship is with the Lord when yes. we choose not. Yes. to go back into situations and get man's approval. Right. You right. know, even if we want to try and clean it up, it just means we say, I'm steadfast in God. Yes. I, I, he has uh, anointed me, appointed me, called me, set me apart. It's okay if they don't get it. That's right. And I'm just going to rest in my relationship with the Lord and hang on to that. And that is that is a process of maturity right there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. You know, I believe there are several processes that prophets have to go through uh, to maintain that purity and to uh, really be set apart. And that's one of them passing that test of pride and then also dealing with that rejection test, the test of approval. And then there, there are several others that I write about in the book, uh, looking at the life of Elijah and Elisha. 
Well, we're, I want to hear all about that. <laughs> we're going to come back in just a minute. And we're going to talk more about these uh, specific prophets in the Word of God. And we're going to expound more on how that affects us as prophets. If you're called to the mantle of a prophet, how does their life uh, reflect what we're supposed to be being and doing in this process? So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Dr. Candace Smitheman is an international prophetic voice, healing minister, author, and pastor who travels the world sharing how to access the heavenly realms and live the resurrected life. Her passion is to see people healed and delivered and come into a knowledge of who they are in Christ as royal heirs seated with Him in the heavenly realms. She believes everyone can access heaven and walk in the power of God. In her meetings, your faith will increase and you will feel the presence of God and see miraculous healings. Dr. Candace loves to teach and train in the supernatural and mentor you in the glory. She offers many classes in her School of the Supernatural where you too can learn to release heaven, the glory, and walk in the power of God. She's also a mentor life coach and founder of Dream Mentors International, an organization that teaches and trains biblical life coaches. Check out her website and subscribe to her YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook for more resources. I'm so happy that you stayed with us because we are talking about the power and purity of the prophetic call. And my guest today, Prophet Joshua Giles, has written an amazing book called The Rise of the Micaiah Prophet and all about the purity of walking in that call. And so we're going to continue the discussion here. Uh, Prophet Joshua, you began to bring us to that place of, of other prophets that are in the Word of God and how they went through process. Absolutely, Dr. Candice. Um, and this is one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk about, uh, looking at Elijah's life. He's a huge example for many of us that are in the prophetic on what we should model our ministries after. Uh, Elijah began to train uh, the prophet Elisha or Elisha. And as he was training him, he took him through a series of processes. And I talk about this mm -hmm. in chapter five of my book, and it deals with prophetic training. What does that entail? I find that every prophet needs to be trained. There are, there are many people that think, oh, you know, I just got this gift and I don't need anybody to teach me. And uh, we end up kind of making mistakes and blunders when we don't have that. Uh, but the first thing that Elijah did was put him through uh, resistance training. Uh, this was saying, I want you to wait here and then uh, I'll, I'll go and do this. And Elisha said to him, I'm going to go as long as the Lord my God lives. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And he was really testing him to see how bad do you want uh, this? How, how much do you really want to stick close to the ministry? How closely are you going to follow after uh, what I'm doing, the assignment? And every time he just went right with him. Then he also took him through yoke training when he first met him. This is where uh, El Elisha's in the field and he's with his lucrative family business and Elijah uh, throws the mantle on him. And then uh, the protege has the choice. Am I going to leave this business that's bringing me money, uh, what I'm comfortable with and follow after God, you know, or will I pass this moment and just stay where I am? So we can see examples in scripture of sacrifice when it comes to the prophetic. And, you know, Dr. Candace, I believe that's a key word when it comes to purity in the prophetic. What are you willing to sacrifice for the Lord? And, and that's uh, for me, that's been something that God's brought me back to over and over again. Are you willing to give up this for that? You know, what I found in my prophetic call along those lines is every time the Lord asks me to sacrifice something, he fulfills it even yes, greater with absolutely. his presence yes. or with a promotion of some sort. Yes. Um, and I found that there is nothing on this planet that will ever satisfy you. Once you have touched deep and abiding relationship with the Lord. Yes. And so no matter how the enemy may come and tempt us or try and move us away from the call of God on our life by using those kinds of uh, false or, and external types yes. of things, when we've been trained properly, part of that training is coming to the place of saying, no, it doesn't matter what you offer me That's because right. nothing right. is greater than being with him. Oh, I'll so give it all up. And really, the prophet's call is very much 
about the prophet and the Lord. Yes. There is something that is so divine about that deep connection. The Lord spoke to Moses as a friend. Yes. You know, and it's as important for God to have his prophets as it is for the world to have the prophetic voice of the Lord going forth. Absolutely. You know, it's very, very vital. And so when God was training me, I just kept coming back to there's nothing better than him. Oh, so, yeah. so what is it that you're going to offer me, you know, yeah, or yeah, what is yeah. it that I need? Yeah. Approval of man or money? No, nothing. And so I think it's really important you have that in your book because I think that helps to determine what's true and what's false. Yes. yes. Expound on that a little bit. Cause I know you've helped train younger prophets. Absolutely. What do they say about that? Well, you, you're saying so much here that I think is so powerful. Um, just mentioning friendship. You know, that's something that we've got to bring back into the narrative with prophetic training. Uh, being a friend of God is more important than anything else in the world. And I think the majority of a prophet's ministry is not on stages, not on platforms, not with microphones in your hand, but the majority of a prophet's ministry is in that prayer closet with the Lord, is in that secret place. And uh, that's anywhere you go. Uh, God is there with you. And that's something that I've learned and I train others in that as well. I think sometimes people have a, a view that's out of balance and they think, you know, if you're a prophet, you should be prophesying 24 seven. You should be, you know, preaching all the time. And they, they don't realize that the secret place is where we're called to. And it is a distinguishing line between the true and the false, uh, because those that are true prophets, they love the presence of God. They love worship. They love the heart of God. That's what we love. Those that are false, they're more about the surface level. They're more about, uh, you know, just spending that time in the public eye and not private time with the Lord. And so the Bible says this in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. Yes. What are they bearing? Uh, those that are true prophets, they're going to always lead people to Christ. They're going to always show that example of being in the presence of God, leading others into the glory. Uh, those that are false, they're not going to bear that fruit. They're going to try to bring glory to themselves. And that's a key difference uh, with false prophets. They bring the attention and honor to themselves and not to the Lord. You know, that's really important. What I'm finding here in, in these latter days that we're living in is that the true prophetic voice and the true apostolic voice are always speaking from being seated with Christ in yes. heavenly places. Yes. That the words that they bring forth are heaven driven. They're heaven's perspective. They are always coming from that place of being seated with him and yes. what will overflow as a result of that. And, and I've noticed that a lot of times Times, you know, we have all these voices coming at us Absolutely. these days and it's very hard to discern what is truly the voice of the Lord. But when I uh, measure hearing God's voice, I measure it and I can see it consistently in prophetic voices that speak from a heavenly perspective are always bringing forth the true yes. and an unadulterated word of God. You know, yes. they know their place. And just as you said, they want to be in his presence more than they want the platform. Absolutely. And that is the biggest test for a brand new uh, ministry leader. Absolutely. You know, um, the, the, um, the earth realms and, and the enemy want to always make the earth and the platforms look like they're the greatest place That's on the true. earth, Oh wow! you know, and, yeah. and they're just, they're not, they're not, but we find that real prophets, as you said, draw close to the Lord. Yes. And then of course they speak from that heavenly, Absolutely. that heavenly perspective. Yeah, and that, that's the beautiful thing. When you have that connection with the Father, He brings you into His heavenly counsel. Yes. You're there in, in the court of heaven. You're a part of that assembly and you hear the deliberations of the Spirit. And when we come in this earth realm and prophesy, we are simply echoing what we've heard in the chambers of heaven in our personal private prayer time. That's right. Yeah. We speak what we hear in the chamber. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, um, I think, I mean, that's just so important. I think you really need to get this concept that if God is calling you to be a prophet and there's different elements of that, the whole body is the body of Jesus Christ that's called to prophesy, but some are called to the office of prophet and the rise of the Micaiah prophet is a distinction in that you're honing in on those that are called to the office of prophet. Absolutely. They're feeling that call in their life. And so if that's you, I want you to reach out to Joshua, go to joshuajobs.com 
www.ChuckDaniels.com and get a copy of his book so you can learn more about these very things. Now stay tuned with us because we're going to talk more about being a Micaiah prophet, being a pure prophet. Are you in need of personal counseling or coaching or would like some direction and encouragement? Dr. Candice is a board certified counselor who walks in the gifts of prophecy and healing, and she wants to mentor you. In her School of the Supernatural, Dr. Candice will teach you through her e-courses, books, and many other additional resources that will help you strategize and release heaven in every area of your life. Her classes on the supernatural will equip you to live in the heavenly realms on a daily basis. You can also schedule some personal time with Dr. Candace, where she will encourage and pray for you in private 45-minute sessions to help you walk through personal issues in your life and propel you into your purpose and destiny. Visit her website for all of her resources and follow and subscribe to Dr. Candace on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm so glad that you stayed with us. We're having a great time on set here talking about how to be a prophetic minister of the Lord, one who's called, anointed, appointed, one that walks in humility, one that has positioned themselves to go through the processes that God takes us through to be a prophet. Now we have prophecy that the body of Jesus Christ shall prophesy and the spirit of prophecy is there when we all come together and we prophesy together as one. But some are called to the office of prophet, which means they're set apart for that particular office. And so I want to talk some more to prophecy. Prophet Joshua about raising up an army, a company of prophets that come before the Lord and need special training for that. Yes, you know, that's one of the subjects that I hit in this book, uh, The Rise of the Micaiah Prophet. You know, I believe it's not just one prophet that the Lord's looking for. He's looking for a company, a body of prophetic people mm -hmm. that will stand up in the might of God and uh, really echo what he's uh, saying in heaven. And so what I've noticed is the Lord's raising up a new breed. Uh, it's not uh, in the box that we have tried to put people in, but I'm seeing now a breed of people that God is literally rescuing out of the clutches of the enemy, bringing them in, purifying them, and raising them up. And they have a testimony. They have a past. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not look exactly the way that uh, others do. Uh, they may come from a different type of background. But the Lord's raising up this company, and it's all races together. It's it's multicultures. It's everybody operating in the kingdom uh, with this alignment uh, on one accord in the spirit. And I'm also noticing as the Lord's raising up this army, our company of prophets, it's a merging of streams that's happening right now. Uh, there are people that may have uh, a certain type of anointing and their strong suit may be in one area, and maybe they haven't fellowship with someone else in the kingdom from another area, but the Lord's causing those streams to merge and we're seeing an army of believers rise up because that's what it's gonna take in order to defeat uh, the demonic powers that we see in the world right now. Wow, an army of the company of prophets. Whoa, yes. that is incredibly powerful. But I love how you talk about the streams coming together. Yes. Because as our world has expanded and we have all different ways of connecting with yes, one another yes. now, we have all different ways of connecting with each other's ministries through a variety of different ways. I can see that these streams are melting together, but we're coming together as one voice. Yes, yes. And we are speaking the word of the Lord and we are speaking from heavenly perspectives. Absolutely. And so I know some of you watching right uh, right today, you're, you're thinking to yourself, um, you know, I have been manifesting um, some uh, spiritual giftings where I hear the voice of the Lord. The Lord speaks to me about certain things for certain people, but I'm young at this. I need more um, teaching. I need more education in that area. If that's you, I'm going to ask Prophet Joshua to, to pray for you right now so you can receive an impartation and activation because we want to take you from where you're at into the new place that God has for you. There's challenges and struggles there, but you're going to draw closer to the Lord and develop a relationship with him that is so important to God, bringing forth his word in the earth. Prophet Joshua, will you pray for the people? Absolutely. Dr. Candice, I can sense that there are those watching now that feel this pull, 
uh, they can sense uh, that God wants to stir something up in them and uh, they're ready. And so I want to pray and activate you now that are watching uh, and just lift your hands as a point uh, of contact of, of your faith. And I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every individual watching that feels this pull in the spirit. They feel this uh, calling to the office of the prophet. They can sense that there is an assignment and mandate on their lives. Father, I pray that you would begin to release a fire in them, stir them up, act Activate them. I pray, Father, that you would come uh, pour your spirit over them. Uh, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would begin to raise up this company of believers, those that are watching, those that are listening, uh, those that know that there's something greater for their lives. You would raise them up and use them for your glory. Let their ears and the spirit be open to another dimension to hear what they have not heard before. Father, let their vision and the spirit be open to another degree uh, to see what they have not seen before. And I release this anointing right now to activate believers that are watching. I release the anointing of prophecy. I release the Nabi to bubble up and prophesy. The, the Nataf that drops down with the preaching, the powerful preaching prophetic word. And Father, I thank you right now that you're even sending prophets into the marketplace. You're sending them beyond the realm of the church. You're sending them into every system of the earth. And there are many that are watching now that that your anointing is going to touch and they will be sent forth and commissioned on this assignment in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Wow. I could really feel that. Yes, for sure. And I know that there are those who are watching. If that's you and you felt just that rise on the inside of you, that rise of the Micaiah prophet <laughs> yes. coming on the inside of you, I want you to reach out to, to Prophet Joshua. Go to joshuagiles.com and uh, make contact with him. Get a copy of his book. Reach out to me at candacesmithman.com. We want to give you some free resources too, some things that are going to really help you grow in the call, the anointing, how God has appointed you and set you apart. It's a long, tough journey when you're called to it be is. a prophet. We, you, you may look, it may look like on the surface, oh, wow, this is the greatest thing. But underneath yes. is where God is doing the mighty, mighty work. So you're going to need somebody to hold your hand, walk you through the processes, encourage you. You have a school of prophecy, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, that, that school is actually in session now, and we do it seasonally. And I'm training prophets it's virtually. And so we're able to meet every week online and there are discussions and uh, group ministry that takes place. And so it's a powerful opportunity to learn and to be trained in the prophetic. Amen. Amen. So you want to reach out to him for that as well. I also have a school. Awesome. My school too also provides training in the supernatural. And of course, prophecy is one of those aspects of the supernatural. We want you to be equipped. Our job is to come together to equip, train, teach you, cause you to see and hear what the true words of the Lord are saying so that you can get your life in alignment with the word of God. And once you get in that place, then God can use you in a mighty, mighty way. But don't forget this show because we're really talking about having the, a merry spirit in a Martha doing. Yes, That's for yes. sure. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. It truly has been a blessing. We've had the opportunity to speak to you about purity in the prophetic. I want you to reach out to me at candacesmithman.com. I have lots of resources there. Remember, take the hand of Messiah and walk into your destiny.